All right, this is Fission 3.0, a new sponsor to the channel. So yes, I am biased, but if you have kept up with current uranium news, you will have noticed that there uh, is a, a project generator slash explorer in the Athabasca Basin who's just made a discovery. And obviously the price has followed suit as well as the volume. Uh, they have uh, counts per second readings that are completely off the charts. I want to say off the charts, I actually mean that the scintillometer um, is hitting its max and they're super excited. I'm also super excited to bring them on. And I hope you learned something with this interview about what are the next steps for Fission 3.0. Enjoy. We are here with Dev from Fission 3.0. Welcome, Dev. Thank you for having time for us. No problem. And I want to get straight into Fission 3.0. Um, a lot of people on this channel have heard about Fission Uranium, right? You guys have been around for a long time. And then apparently there's a Fission 3.0 that most people didn't really follow for a very long time. And now all of a sudden, it's all people want to talk about. Please tell me what the story is sure. with Vision 3.0. Well, first of all, I should tell you that we had a company one time that was split into two. Um, other, those pieces got sold to Energy Fuels, the U.S. piece. And the Canadian piece became a company called Vision Energy. Vision Energy, backed by the Korean um, utility, found, made a discovery and sold that to Lucas Lundin, the late, great, awesome Lucas Lundin. Um, and we took whatever was on the west side of the basin and started a new company called Fission Uranium. Again, um, we even hit a bigger deposit um, called Triple R. Uh, Ross was the president, I was the CEO. Um, but we only owned half of it, so we bought the other half from Alpha, and what happened is we took all the exploration assets and put them into Fission 3.0. That's why the name Fission 3.0, Fission Energy, Fission Uranium, Fission 3.0. I guess we could have been more creative, but we weren't. Um, but um, so this is Fission 3.0. These are basically exploration assets that Fission Uranium had uh, handpicked. We owned 100% of every property. We were we waited for bear markets. We started picking up things along the way because we were cash rich. We could always do that. So it's typical like your investors. They want to buy when stocks are low, sell high. We do the same thing at a commodity level. We buy assets. So that's what Fission 3.0 is. And anybody that listened to me for the last eight years, I said, look, it's a very tough business exploring in the basin. Very difficult. Um, Lucas once said to me, it's like standing on top of a building 10 floors up using a handgun and trying to hit a motorcycle going 100 miles an hour. Very tough. So when we did the second time, it was, I can't believe that. Who does the second? I hope he's uh, watching and realize we did it for the third time. And we're obviously excited because this discovery hole is bigger than anything well, anybody's seen. You know, um, I'll send you a slide uh, for discovery holes. Um, it's massive. Now, obviously, we need the assays. So we don't know till the assays come out. We need more holes to figure that out. But the three things this discovery hole has, every potential world-class deposit it has to have. Width, it's got to be big. It's also got to be high grade. Um, so we got 50 meters, 20 meters core. You've got, so it's wide. But you've also got 65 counts per second, which means high grade. Some say it can be high as 15, 20% uranium, you get those numbers. But it depends because you got to remember scintillometer machines are calibrated differently. So width, great. And it's only 20, it's only 200 meters from the surface. It's not 500 or a kilometer down. So it's going to be cheaper to explore. It's going to be cheaper to mine one day. So we got the three things in this discovery hole you want. Width, great, and it's shallow. Um, so Ray and the boys, you know, like we've always talked about Management, management, management. And secondly, are management writing checks when other people write checks? And that's one thing we always say, we as management, Ray is our leader, 
uh, Ross is on the board, and I as a CEO, like we write our own checks. That's what I love about our guys. So we care if the stock is 25 cents today, you know? So, and these are things that you, you know, I've talked about. That's what you got to have. And sure enough, you know, you've got a massive uh, discovery hole. Awesome. So you're, and you're I- talking about management having skin in the game. And obviously, I mean, uh, making yet another discovery in the Athabasca Basin is something that we for sure do take notice. Um, I, do you know percentage-wise how much the, the board and, and management and, and close people um, to, to the company you guys own? If I talk, or if I talk to my daughters, I talk to my few friends. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what 20% is, but you got to remember because we were a spin-out of a spin-out of a spin-out mm-hmm. of a spin-out. It's a spin-out. You're going to have a lot of legacy shareholders. <laughs> So that's why we have 300 million out. So, but look, in a bad, bad market, not a good uranium market, mm-hmm. the stock has seven cents as high as 25 cents. That's, yeah. you know, 350% in one week in a terrible market and Thanksgiving is on. So it tells you that, and what, what you know, Fabi, I'm not, I always say you don't have to be the brightest, but know who is. I had super smart geologists go, holy crap, this is monstrous. Um, I had a guy who worked on Arrow and Next Gen tell his broker, dude, you don't understand this hole. Um, so it's when smart geologists say, Dev, you got something that means a lot to me. Um, and that's what I think um, you listen to people who understand uranium and stuff. They're buying the stock. That makes me feel good. Awesome. And so what can you tell us about, you know, you not being a geologist and me not being a geologist, most people who watch this <laughs> channel aren't technically inclined or geos. Um, what can you tell us about this whole um, that means something or that might give us a tip into what we're looking at here regarding size and, and potential grade? Sure. You know, um, everything I do is, is projecting and I don't want to be for government issues. Um, what I encourage people to do is become more educated. Um, compare these holes. I'll send you the slide. It's on our it's on our website, but um, look at it. Different kinds. Like look at arrow. It goes straight down. So that's a four or five hundred straight down. Big chunks of, whereas triple R are going this way a little bit. So we have to do some homework, and we'll know that in two weeks. We should get our assays for Christmas. I don't know. Um, we're putting a rush on everything. So I, I can ask these questions about a month. I'm just right now know that um, we have the three things in our discovery hole, massive width, high grade. And I you don't need a lot. You know, a football stadium can have 1,500 million pounds depending on grade. So you don't need a lot of land. It's not like a copper mine. You know, in the seminaries all the way through, it's not like an oil field, which is, you know, consistent. One uranium deposit to another can be greatly there. You know, you've heard people talk about be proud of 1% uranium. You know, that's a little great in, in Athabasca. Um, you know, the other nice thing about this project, uh, Patterson Lake North, it's right, up, right below us is a corridor that's got next gen's arrow. It's got triple R. So, and they're about seven, eight years ahead of us. So they'll have a mill built for us. They will have everything done for us. We'll have a place to feed it. Because obviously they got to build mill together. You know, I hopefully Leah and Ross can do that. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it's nice to be for the change late in the game because those guys will have the mill set up for us. <laughs> you don't have to be the, the first one in to the west of the basin to to go out there and actually raise the billion plus uh dollars in order to build the infrastructure out that everybody else will be able to to then use yeah. and that's and if you're going to sell to a major that's important that they know there's other mines in the area uh, there's an old adage you find a mine near a mine because how fluids move and everything exactly that you don't know it's again me but they just move as they want uh, you just don't know uh, but what I, like I said, what I do know is that um, that you are in the right area. Um, you're around other giants. Um, 
And we have done this before where we found something and we know now, okay, small steps, small steps, small steps, understand it, get it better. Okay, now bang, throw a, you know, throw a home run 50 meters up. Right now, we're at getting the assays is number one and putting three holes in. So by Christmas, we should have three holes in, three more holes, up dip, down dip. It's sitting like this. You want to, and your discovery holes here, you want to hit some here, you want to hit some here. See where it goes. Now you've got this tail. Let's see where, where it all goes. Then the assays will tell us how good the hole is. And you don't know. Uh, but ask people who do. Dave Talbot's of the world. Um, other ask geologists. Don't ask, you know, an MBA. But uh, but like I said, I'm so proud of our team. I'm proud of Ray uh, and the rest of the guys, you know. Um, and we're excited. So basically, it's the best start any junior's had in a very long time. That's all I can say. Cool. And is there any particular reason why um... – uh, you have found this now. Um, have you sort of kept Fission 3.0 um, kind of on, on the back burner for a little while? Because I've heard the name before for quite a sure. while. And yeah. now it feels like, you know, you guys went to the market, raised money, went out yeah. and drilled. Uh, was this the first time ever that you, you actually got no. to drill or is this um, the continuation oh, of work that's been done previously? Oh. oh, no, we've been drilling for quite a while. But it's tough. Like, you know, we had, first of all, we had 16 properties, right? You got to figure out where you go. We always said Patterson Lake North was our priority because we know the geology in the area and it's what we know. Um, we drilled it. Um, got, we got smoke last year. Several, quite distance away, we noticed uranium was out there. So based on that, we thought, well, where could it go? So if people were watching, but most people aren't. Most unfortunate investors tend to, you know, momentum players. They're not contrarian. And a Rick Rule says, you're not a contrarian, you're a victim. So most people don't, it was always been there. You know, I, we raised almost 20 million last fall. Thanks to Red Cloud and Ocean Wall and the team and our marketing guys. We raised a lot of money. And there's an old saying when, you know, ducks are quacking, feed them. So we took 20 million. And then when the, when the when the crunch came this year, we cut our overhead significantly. In fact, we were actually positive cash flow. Uh, we had seven million in the bank, and it was making four percent. And, and because our overhead so low, um, we're not paid a lot as a group. Hope I can change that. Um, that and between uh, joint venture attraction, we sold a few shares. We, we actually our cash went up through the year because we just you know. We're a very entrepreneurial group. I promise, guys, when times are bad, take a little less. When times are good, I'll, I'll make it up to you double more. And that's what we've done for our people. People, 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 you got to give them enough money, and we have. And Ray, number three, and we're obviously very pumped. And, um, but it it's – but encourage guys to look at the results. You know, do your own homework. Educate yourself, you know, and uh, – there's a slide in there talking about a next gen zero ISO and hurricane, uh, fission uranium. They're right there, base load, kind of Alaska. It gives you a bit of perspective on valuations. And hey, we so still got 15 go more properties. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. So if you have so many properties um, and you have, um, had such a great hit in one of them uh, is the idea to concentrate fully on that one um or are you still going to drill the others what, what's the play um it's an incubator right we always try to move things along um it's a prototype that ross and ray have done move them along move them along learn them learn them we have theories about it you got 16 people sitting in a room oh i think it could you know it came from here it came from there we test our theories they work, we keep going. And that's what's happened with PLN. We test it, test it. Okay, let's look at A1. But hang on. So um, what will, no, no, I think obviously our drilling will be very heavy. We'll drill a lot this winter. Um, we want to know right away how many, we want to know like everybody else. Hang on, 
five million pounds or you know hundreds of million who knows so you got to find out and you need a lot of money however i'll always take some money and move projects along to what we call drill ready stage we got a call the other day from an industry player he goes i'm looking for a project and that's just simple do you want to drill this winter or next winter well we've got three projects that we can drill this winter we've got three that we drilled next summer so we have got this pretty systematically set out and so you know there's i'm gonna you know i'm looking forward to you know spending more money um traction guys have been fabulous uh Lester and a guy has done a super job raising money. And, uh, you know, Amin is, uh, they're hardworking guys. And as they raise money, they're going to be drilling with us. So we're hoping to get three or four more players. So we focus on our main flagship and joint venture on others. But they're all great projects. It's not like, it's not like Cinderella with a stepsister and all that kind of stuff. They're all pretty good projects. Awesome. So where are we at um, with the the sort of balance of cash versus what we need to spend during, uh, let's call it the next uh, winter? Um, sure. How big is, is, is the drilling campaign that's going to happen? How much cash do you suppose is going, going to be left at the end of that? How are you managing that? Good question. We have about 7 million hard cash, another million in soft. But we decided to extend the program, obviously. So we need another million and a half. So I think if we spend what we have, we'll have six million hard cash that gets us through the year. <laughs> By that time, we will have uh, assays and a few more holes to understand it. Um, and then we'll go out and um, uh, raise funds. If I get a good offer now, I'll look at it. Um, but um, I think... Uh, we just got to wait. <laughs> but the, one of the problems having a funding bill of discovery, it puts a cap on it. You know, so I'm telling everybody, be smart. This is just 12 cents. I don't know what I'm doing to funding. Go in the open market, buy your stock. Funding happens, great. And you get lucky to get some, great. But what happens if you get shut out? Because I got friends who are calling me going, Damn, I got extra 5 million I want to put in. What the hell? Um, I only need like two. So um, there's so many people have offered us money, but um, you know, I'm going to do what's best for the company. I'm going to do best for shareholders, which is I'm the largest retail, you know, on the, on the block. So um, I care, but my costs are much higher. So, you know, yeah. You know, like I said, it's uh, great early days, get some assays, do some more drilling, uh, but what a way to start. It's like, you know, scoring five goals in the first minute. Well, anyways, thanks for having me on. And I think the story evolves. If we get to another hole, we can do another chat. As I learn more, I'm happy to share that. Awesome. Thank you, Dev. And just as a last word, what can uh, shareholders expect? I think you mentioned <coughs> something from now until the end of the year that you're expecting to have the assays out. Um, and, and you said a couple more holes are coming along. Three more holes for Christmas, and we should have the assays from this last hole before Christmas. So in the next four weeks, you see some good news coming despite Christmas. Awesome. Very good. Uh, that's it. That's Fission 3.0. I hope you learned something from this, and we'll be sure to catch up with Dev and the rest of the team as well as they progress. Dev, best of luck. I'll catch you soon. Thank you.